In this lesson, we'll use the second derivative test for relative extrema. So this is after 3.1. In 3.1, we use the first derivative test. Um, we had to first find the increasing and decreasing interval. And um, if it is increasing to the left and decreasing to the right of that point, we call this relative maximum, right? And if it was decreasing to the left and increasing to the right, we call this relative minimum. So first derivative test, we have to find the increasing and decreasing interval first. And then we can tell whether it is a uh, relative maximum or relative minimum. But in 3.2, we are using something slightly different. It's called a second derivative test for relative extrema. As the name suggests, you will have to find the second derivative. Okay, if you get the second derivative and you plug in that critical value, okay, if you find f double prime of c, and if it comes out to be positive, if it comes out to be positive, if the second derivative at c is positive, then what we know is f of c must be relative minimum. If the second derivative at this critical value is negative, if it's smaller than zero, then that f of c is going to be relative maximum. So this is the second derivative test. So you will not only need to find the second derivative, you need to find the critical value so that we can plug in and check the sign, okay? Now, what if it's equal to zero? Um, for second derivative equal to zero, because some critical values will act that way. If the, if the second derivative test fails, well, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to go back and use the first derivative test to determine if uh, whether f of x is a relative extremum, okay? Extremum, extrema, or well, you see what I mean. So second, I think some of the examples later that I will show you uh, where the first, second derivative just comes out to be zero. In that case, we have to go back to our backup plan, the first derivative test that we talked about in our Zoom meeting this week. So let me do the first example. Um, I think the daily problem is very similar to all of these examples that I will go over. Um, I do want to create a shorter video, so I will do example one and I will stop the recording, okay? For the following function, A, give the coordinate of any critical points. I will do that. So let's find the critical po points. Find the first derivative, and we're going to set it equal to zero. The first derivative is 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. We set this equal to zero, and I can see I can factor out three from this trinomial. If I do that, I see a nice trinomial that can be factored. I put three times one, make three a positive, and make the one a negative, they will add up to two. So I can see that critical values are x equals from x plus 3 as you can see the first critical value is negative 3 and the other one from x minus 1 if x is positive 1 wouldn't that be 0 so we found these two and uh, we also well we want to find the critical points so let's go ahead and write these as points I need their y values so let me plug in negative 3 into the original f of x, okay? Not the derivative, because if you plug it into the derivative, you, derivative, you will get 0. That's not what we want. Um, we're going to find their y values. So, so here is what I need to type into my scientific calculator. Let me try that real quick. Or maybe I can stop the recording. All right, I got 14. Now, the second part, you will need to plug in the other critical value of 1. So let's see what we get when we plug in 1. 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 9 times 1 minus 13. Let's see what that is. That is negative 18. So we got critical points. Let's write them down. Critical points are negative 3, 14, and... 1, negative 18. Great. Now, they also said classify each point as relative maximum, relative minimum, or neither. So, I will now use the second derivative test, okay? The second 
derivative test da da. So to do that, I need the second derivative. So let me go and look at that first derivative that we found above here. Just I'll just copy it down over here so that I can show a nice. So the second, well, you know, let me just go straight to the second derivative. Second derivative is 6x plus 6, isn't it? If you take the derivative of this, that is 6x plus 6. Now, what do we do? We're not going to set it equal to 0. That's for later. That's for later. What we now do is we're going to plug in our critical values in here. So first critical value, who is up? I'm going to plug in negative 3. 6 times negative 3 plus 6. And where you're, if you're thinking, where did you get negative 3 from? That is my first critical value. You plug uh, both of these critical values in and check the sign. So what's that going to be? That is negative 18 plus 6, which is negative 12. Because this is negative, this implies negative 3, 14 is a relative maximum okay so if the second derivative comes out to be negative it is relative maximum relative maximum okay now let's check the second critical value what is the uh, second derivative at positive one that is the second critical value as you can see so if i plug in one i will get six times one plus six which is 12 and because the second derivative came out to be positive this implies that 1, negative 18 is a relative what? Okay, look, positive second derivative implies that that f of c is the relative minimum, okay? Relative minimum. So I just answered part A. Um, what else do we have to do? I may need more room, so let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Okay, they said... Um, let me just go back and see if I did everything. So I found, give the coordinate of the critical points. I did that right there. Classify each point as relative minimum or maximum or minimum. We did that right here. What else? Identify interval where the function is increasing or decreasing. Ah, okay, okay. All righty. So we can do the first derivative test, but let me see if I can just go with these ones so far. So what I will do is I'll just sketch a quick graph. It's not going to be a perfect graph, but if I have a graph like this, um, let me plot these points. 1, 18. 1, negative 18. 1, negative 18. This is the relative minimum. Okay, and the other point is, is at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, positive 14. I'll just call that 14, guys. This is negative 3, 14, and we know this, is, this point is relative maximum. So that is the highest point in that region. So what I can do is I can sketch a quick graph. So if this is a maximum, I know the graph will be uh, increasing to the left and decreasing to the right of that point. Try to use a different color. So like increasing to the left, decreasing to the right, because it's a maximum. And down here, it's going to be increasing to the right and decreasing to the left of this to make it a minimum, right? And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to connect these dots, okay? And that is perfect. Wow, that looks good. So now I get to say where it is increasing and decreasing. So I'll say, what is the name of this function? F. Okay, f is increasing from negative infinity to negative 3 union, this is 1, wasn't it? From 1 to positive infinity. And f is decreasing on, in between, negative 3 and 1. Because as you can see, this graph was going down in that region and everywhere else it was going up. So that is how you can use the first, uh, the second derivative test. And as you can see, this was a little bit different from um, what we did in section 3.1. In 3.1, 
you notice that we use the increasing and decreasing interval of uh, to find if it is increase uh, if it is a relative maximum or minimum so this is this is really the opposite order we find the uh, extrema first and then we using those extrema uh, we determine if the the area to the left or the right is increasing or decreasing so this was the first example i do want you to come back and watch the second one and the third one soon okay